Welcome to this video. I'm very pleased to bring you an interview performed by Jacinta Gonzalez of Garibandal. It's a very extensive one. As a matter of fact, it's the most extensive interview ever provided by one of the seers from Garibandal. And it was done in 2021 by the very famous Catholic author, Jose Maria Zavala. And he did it in a format where he asks questions and receives answers. And this is the book right here that I'm referring to. Now, I will translate it as we go, because it's written in Spanish. It's not available in the English language yet. So I'm very pleased that I can provide this information to you. And I'm going to focus on the three major events that were announced at Garibandal, which are the warning, the miracle, and also the chastisement. And for those who may not be familiar with Garibandal, it is a Marian apparition that began in 1961 and concluded in 1965 to four seers, four young girls at the time. And it happened to coincide with Vatican II, which was in process at the same time as well. I mentioned at Garibandal, where prophecies that made it very similar to those mentioned at Akita and Fatima, and I believe also Medjugorje, when we come to know their secrets. So I'm going to begin by sharing some initial information from the author received from Jacinta concerning spiritual warfare and a little bit about herself, and then we'll get right into the warning, the miracle, and the chastisement. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the first question that we have from the author to Asita is about spiritual warfare. And he references a comment by Father Gabriel Amorth, the exorcist from Rome. He says, do you not know that the devil was quoted by Father Amorth as saying, I love greatly when matrimony or marriages are dissolved. And the devil often lies, but the devil sometimes tells the truth, especially under exorcisms. And the response from Asinta is, of course, the family right now is going through a great crisis because it is known that the family is the tissue that holds a sane society together and makes it look towards God. And no one more than the demonic, the devil, is interested in the condemnation of souls. And the author, does the devil attack you much? And the reply, yes, like everyone in the world. And the author again, but you are close to Jesus. And the contrary would be those who live in mortal sin, who the devil may leave alone. And her response is, the devil provides much confusion and also lies. He's always at work. And another comment that she made is that when she's attacked by the devil, she makes this announcement. She says, the sacred heart of Jesus is with me. Watch it. And she tells the devil. And a little bit about Hasita. Of the four seers in Garibandal, she was the only one that had a vision of the sacred heart of Jesus. 
as a vision that she said had the most impact upon her. I did a short video, about five minute video, about two years ago on that. And she says that it's the most vivid vision of all, and one that she carries with her all the time. And the author, do you believe that God can take from evil and make it good? In other words, can God bring good out of evil? And she says, regarding the world and society itself, that society must be lost for it to be renewed. In other words, it's similar to some of the discussion that you hear regarding the purgation that we're going through. Society must be cleansed. And in her words, she says it must be lost. It must be lost so it can be found. It must be lost so it can be renewed. And this is a, a discussion they get into regarding the loss of vocations. And Jacinta's comments regarding this are very stark. I was actually surprised by them. So the author asked about the abandonment of vocations by priests. And she says, I look at it from a good perspective, where if a, a priest is giving a bad example, in other words, a priest is not exercising his ministry correctly, she views it as a good that the priest would leave his vocation. And she goes on further to say that in a lot of cases, priests that are not exercising their ministry correctly live in private in a manner with little to no efficacy. And these are the priests, she says, that do not have faith. The author actually expressed some surprise regarding this, and her response to that was, when a priest abandons his ministry for reasons that she mentions, she, said, she thinks to herself, good, at least he's not providing scandal. So she correlates priests leaving with vocations as meaning that they've lost their ministry, their faith, They've lost their faith, and if they lost their faith, they can no longer provide it or to help others acquire it. So I was very shocked when I read that because I thought it was rather stark. And here's a question about the mercy of God. And the author asks, is the mercy of God without limit? And her response is, yes. God is mercy, but also he is justice. And that's a perfect segue to get into the warning and the miracle and the conditional chastisement. So the first question about the warning, what do you expect if humanity continues to turn its back on God? So everything today is in reverse. But I believe and have faith that the world will once again become light or turn to the light. God is infinitely merciful and wishes to save us all. And this is you out there. What does the warning consist of? God provides us an opportunity to know all the good and the bad that we have done in our life. We will view in one minute in our interior the same as I mentioned. We will see all the good and the bad that we have done in our life. And each person 
will view the status of their soul in a manner that God views it. The author, so this is the illumination of conscious? Exactly. It's like reading the soul. There are priests and religious that God has given the ability for introspection of conscious in order to correct them, in order to set them on the right course. And the author, like Padre Pio, he was someone who could, with one look, he could tell the number of times that a soul missed Mass from the very first communion. And Hasita, Panchita said that the warning is a type of a chastisement. It's a suffering for how we've offended God. It's also a type of purgatory on earth. And if we remain patient, then it will serve us well. But then, if we do not change after the warning, nor after the miracle, then will come the chastisement. And the author, the warning is for the whole world. And Hasita, it was for every part of the world and every person in particular. Now some will have a great fright, but we should not look at it as something terrible, but as an opportunity, an extraordinary opportunity to purify our souls. And you author, will some then have a heart attack from this fright that Asita mentioned? And she says, I don't believe so, but it's possible. But I insist that on the good that will come from looking at your life passing by. It's like looking at a movie, and we can see that which we should have done good, but did not do. And we'll know that God is giving us an opportunity to change. Conchita says in her diary that the warning will be very good unless someone falls into despair because it serves for our sanctification. So right now, humanity is immersed in darkness, and that is when the warning will come. It is like a call to conversion. And you author, do you know if Conchita continues to see the Virgin or receives locutions from her? Alcita, I do not know. If she sees or hears the Virgin, I'm sure that she would not tell us. The author, why do you think that the Blessed Virgin gave the responsibility of telling the date of the miracle to Conchita instead of to one of the others? And she says, I, I think that if the Virgin confided the date in me, that I would have spoken of it and revealed it before the time it was due. And the Virgin knows best. I thought that was an interesting question. And the next is a discussion about the miracle. And the question from the author, but before the, the chastisement, the Virgin said that there would be a miracle. Is that correct? Yes, says Hasita, after the warning, there will be a great miracle. And if the world does not sincerely convert, then there will be a chastisement. And the author, have you seen the miracle? Hasita, no. 
That has only been known and seen by Conchita. And then the author says, I have in my hand Conchita's diary, and he quotes from that diary. Like the chastisement is very great because we deserve it, the miracle is also immensely great, just like the world needs. And Asinta responded to that by saying, Conchita has the responsibility to announce the date of the miracle. You and Conchita are the same age, correct? And Jacinta, yes, she is only two months older than me. Then the author responds, so at the time, she's 72, so it was three years ago, so she's 75 now. But then, if you're 72, it does not appear that there will be a lot of time left before the miracle. And she, she says, I don't believe so. But it's very important, and this is an important quote she says here, it's very important that we do not wait for the miracle to become good. Conversion needs to be today. Don't even wait until tomorrow. The author again asks about the date and says, Conchita says that we'll announce the date eight days in advance. And this is a response from Asita about those who would go to Garabandal. She said, imagine then the number of people that will try to go to Garabandal. And the author says that you would only need to take a plane and go there as well. And Asita says, it is not important for me to see the miracle. I give grace and thanks to God for the miracle, but it's not important for me to see it. If I am there, I will stay there. But if I'm not there, I will stay at home. And here's a question again. It's about the miracle, but in reference to Joey Lomangino. You said that there was a time when Joey Lomangino would recuperate his vision during the day of the miracle. But he suffered a, a lethal heart attack in June of 2014. And some, because of that, have stopped believing in Garibaldi and the apparitions. And her response was, when Joey passed, I thought to myself, it's in heaven that he will see with the eyes of the soul the miracle and not with the eyes of the flesh. And there's one other question, maybe not about the miracle, but an interesting one. It's about Padre Pio, who was reportedly known to have bilocated to Garibandal when he was asked about it, it was four times. So, the author asked, have you seen Padre Pio and Garibandal from his bilocation there? And Jacinta said, I have heard people say this, but no, I have not seen him. And reportedly, he was seen by Conchita and spoke with Conchita there. Next is the chastisement. And the first question is about the diary of Conchita again. It says the chastisement, if it does not change us, will be horrible. In other words, if we do not change from the warning and the miracle, the chastisement will be horrible. And us, Loli, Jacinta, and me, we have seen it. 
but we cannot say what it consists of because we do not have permission from the Virgin. So there was some description given it had to do with fire, being surrounded by fire. And this was known as the Night of the Screams. But at the same time, they also said that there was something else that was even worse that they could not speak of. Now, I could speculate and say that like other mystics, this could be, if you're talking about fire full from the sky, like in Akita, which would make a lot of sense, or Fatima with the angel with the flaming sword, then it also could be like mystics like Padre Pio and Marie Julie Jaheni and Blessed in a Yellow. It could also be that, like them, that they would also say that the fire falling from the sky and the three days of darkness are the same event. That during the three days of darkness, there is this fire that falls from the sky as well. And that could be what's not being revealed at Garabandal. And it hasn't been revealed by any Marian apparition, whether Akita or Fatima as well. But if it is true what the, some of the mystics say, then perhaps that is the part that remains hidden. The Virgin, she goes on to say, the Virgin told us not to speak of it. So the author continues to ask about the night of the screams, about the chastisement. And Hasita says, the apparition finished the proximate day, about two o'clock in the morning, and we stayed there all night in prayer without moving from that location. And almost all of the, the town confessed went to confession as well because of the great screams that were emanating from the children. She goes on to explain that we cried and screamed much of that night. And we said to the Virgin, and I quote, the children know, the children know. It sounds like our screams were for the children. And of course, the author asks, so, well, what children? And this is something, perhaps some additional information that we may not have heard before. Asita asks, at the time, I did not know. But the more we cried for these children, I realized that these were for the aborted children. And of course, we did not know anything about that at the time in Spain. But now I think those children, they were surely the millions of innocents that have not been born, the poor innocents. And I look at all those children as being thrown out the window by their mothers, and I was horrified. The worst sin of the world is to kill those poor innocents. And again, the author continues and says, you cried and screamed a lot for those children and for everything that our, the Virgin told us as well. More things than I can speak about that we can reveal right now. And the author says, things that are as horrible as the abortion 
And she says, yes. But like I say, I cannot speak of it. Is it possible, says the author, to avert the chastisement? And she responds, we have to have hope. We must first go through the warning, and then in the same year, I believe, the miracle. So this is something the author did not follow up on. It is actually confirmation of what Mary Lowley reportedly said to Father Morellos that the chast that the miracle and the warning would occur in the same year. Not just within a year, but in the same year. And it also, perhaps in that manner, is confirmation of the other aspect of the warning that Mary Lowley said to Father Morellis, that the warning would occur either three weeks or three months prior to the miracle. Again, we go on to speak more of the chastisement, and this is this is Asita continuing her description. The chastisement, I, ins I insist, is for the conversion, and we have to have hope and pray much that the world will change. So, it's an important aspect of what she's saying here is that and it's something for us all to know and understand is that the chastisement is not to punish us. It is to induce us to change, to better our lives, to know that we must change in order to avert it. And then the author goes back to the children that she was referring to and she says, but the children are innocent and do not deserve the chastisement. And Asita says, no, but the chastisement is for the adults because we deserve it and not the innocent children. And then he asks, con continues to ask about this. But in the adults, there will be people also who are innocent. And she says, of course there will be. And this is exactly what we hear from Akita, where in Akita, our Blessed Mother told Sister Sasagawa that it would be a great punishment that would affect not only the bad, but also it would affect the good as well. So it's not like a rapture in reverse, where those who are evil or sinful or unrepentant are punished by themselves, but also the good would be impacted also by that chastisement. And it, it ties into the vision of Fatima where you see the sacrifice of those who walk up the hill, the, those who are martyred, and they're described as being a pope, bishops and priests, and also laity. And they are martyred and are referred to as martyrs in the vision. They are the ones who are good and who are dying as martyrs within this chastisement. And she, and Hasita adds that the best is to live each day with hope and peace and waiting close to our Lord. I do not tire of repeating 
that the conversion needs to be today and not tomorrow. We must ask for help from God. We must ask for much help from God because He is the only one that can sustain us and protect us against the adversity that we have in front of us. There's one thing that the author goes to that he wants to differentiate between the end of the world and the end of times, which our Blessed Mother mentioned at Garabondal, that will be the end of times after the four popes, known as the four pope prophecy, and the last pope was Benedict, and that he would be the last pope of these times. So he's making a distinction between the end of times, as referenced by our Blessed Mother Garabondal, and the end of the world. And he says, it is one thing that's different, the end of the world versus the end of times. And she says, yes, it is very different. And the author says, there's a lot of significant evidence that we are in the end of times now. And Hasita says, we must do the will of God and not do our own will. And she adds, we live in times that are difficult, but not impossible. Now, there are a few very interesting questions that I'm going to add here in this discussion. So the first one is about Asita. So previously, the author asked about Conchita, about whether she continued to see the Blessed Virgin or have locutions, and Jacinta mentioned that she wasn't sure, and that if she did, that she was sure that she would, Conchita would not say. But here he asks Jacinta, do you have locutions? And she says, yes, I have many, but they're only for me. And then again, the Virgin tells you many things then. Yes, but I cannot reveal them to the world. So in other words, the author asks, the Virgin speaks directly to your soul. Yes, and also via dreams. I dream much. And a priest once told me that you have to pay attention to these dreams that you have because they're very much like those of St. Joseph. They are prophetic dreams. And I saw her in an interview one time with her husband. And her husband mentioned the same thing, that she has many dreams, and she'll often have a dream that would become a prophecy. She would dream of something that will happen in the future. And another question that the author has, it's about the expansion of communism and she responds that that was something that was told to Mary Lowley, who has since passed away. And he asked, do you remember exactly what was said? She says, it was something like communism would be the great enemy of Europe, and that the churches would close. And I was thinking that it could have been from the pandemic. But communism is infiltrating little bit at a time. And that's something that I think is important. It's important because there's been a lot of misunderstanding about the role and nature of communism overtaking Europe. And it was considered to be, because of the time, the, the Cold War with Russia, that Russia was going to invade Europe and impose its communist government on all the governments of Europe. But that's not what has happened. And although there is a war now that is very grave, it's very doubtful that there will be an invasion like that. And if there were it would not be to impose 
communist government because communist governments, <laughs> communism itself has been deliberately embraced by Western governments. A little bit at a time, just like Asita has said here, it's been not so much an infiltration, but deliberately they've been selecting to go in that direction. And um, that is something that was one of the points, I think, that when speaking about Garibandal, that was needed to be made because people were thinking, well, none of this is going to happen until communist, communism comes again. I want to repeat a couple of things that Hasita said. One, I think it was very insightful where she says that the world must be lost in order to be renewed. And we see that happening now. And the other one she said is, do not wait until tomorrow to convert. That is a job for today. Do not wait for the warning or the miracle or conversion. Do the best you can and convert yourself today. I want to thank everyone for joining. As usual, God bless.